Oh, yeah. I'm excited tonight. Very excited, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hashtag PVT Tetera Tuesday Mix number 45. Orale, from my PVT Network Studios, brought to you by the law office of Carlos A. Garcia. If you're injured in a serious accident, arrested on serious charges, you need an attorney that's going to fight for you in court because serious cases require a serious lawyer. Carlos A. Garcia llega con guantes al courtroom y se los quita y pura mano pelona, carnal, va a ganar. Y te va a defender 100%, 110%. Llámale a la 956-584-4048-956-584-1448-24 horas al día, 7 días a la semana, 365 días al año. He's always available for you. In any trouble you get, you give him a call and he'll help you out. You can visit his website at thegarciafirm.com. He is board certified in criminal law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. Carlos A. Garcia is the man. Yes, he is. But you got to call in case you get in any trouble. No matter how big the trouble is, this guy can handle it because serious cases require a serious lawyer. And if you're talking serious, you're talking Carlos A. Garcia. All right. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Ya vamos para 17,500 subscribers. And that is just absolutely fantastic. And we haven't been able to do that without your help and assistance. And that's by liking the show, sharing the show. You just copy the link, put it on your social media, and tell all your friends. And you're going to want to do that tonight because we've got an amazing Tejano legend here with us live tonight. I'm very excited. We'll be talking to him in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. Right now, what you can do is text all your friends, message them, do whatever you got to do. Put smoke signals. Tell everybody. That they got a hook up on hashtag PVT, the My PVT Network Studios, right here in the city of McAllen. But you get it on YouTube worldwide, okay? So make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Now, if you want to advertise with us, just like Carlos A. Garcia, tú sabes, si te pones aquí con nosotros, te metes aquí con nosotros, le vamos a echar chingo de crema los tacos, papá. Sustame one time. <laughs> Speaking of tacos. <laughs> <laughs> It's Taco Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, hombre, le, le compramos tacos a Pío y Bessie, pero se duermen con los tacos. Esos tan grandes los tacos. No me, de, 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 comienzan a hacer gorgoritos, gorgoritos de amor, como de, burbujas de amor. Ay, güey. All right. So uh, I kind of let the cat out of the back, but you already know who's here, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to advertise with us, what you got to do is give us a call or text us, right? 956-641-3241. That's 956-641-3241. We've still got a few, a few opportunities for you to be able to get into our show because we're very limited right now because so many people want to advertise and sponsor the segments and anchor the shows. So text us as soon as possible if you're interested in getting in, all right? Also, don't forget, we got the Whiskey D YouTube channel. We have all access, and we were in Abilene, Texas this past weekend, and we got a lot of footage all over the place. Fantastic. I'm showing a little bit. It's beautiful. It is. Heading out over there, the Texas Hill Country, the place that we performed at was huge, an amazing venue. It was packed. Everybody was having a good time, drinking some beers, spending some money, and buying some food, and enjoying even some birthdays. And we even had some PVT fans show up to the show. So it's all on the Whiskey D YouTube channel. Go there, subscribe, hit the little bell, so when we upload footage, you can get it, okay? Also, coming up tomorrow night, we've got pro wrestling from the independent circuit. I mean, this guy is making waves in the independent circuit of pearl wrestling here in the state of Texas. It's Chris Austin on the Rock and Chaz show. That's going to be fantastic. And we'll probably do the millionaire game with him, see if we can we win should. some money. Okay. Yes, we should. And then on Thursday, we have the Throwback Thursday show. All right. The Throwback. We put pictures, old school pictures of me and Rally, and fans send us pictures of them with, uh, with, fans, with celebrities and stuff like that. And so it's a lot of fun. Make sure to join us on Thursday night to finish off the week, okay? Also, we got Duelo Control Intenso. That's happening Saturday, May 29th in San Juan, the city park, uh, the municipal park San Juan, right by the Basilica. So, vas para el concierto, haces todos los pecados que quieres, y de ahí cruzas la calle y vas y prendes una vela y le pides perdón a Dios, okay? That's, that's what you do. That's, a, that's, that's the good thing about this. 
And it's duelo control intenso, so you know you're going to be down in some tequila and some of that good stuff and some cold beer. So we've got a little video spot for it right here. Check it out. Sessie's Entertainment and Promotions and Carpe Knox Entertainment proudly presents Duelo. Saturday, May 29th, it's the Memorial Day Grand Festival in San Juan, Texas. Duelo. Also performing. Control. Intenso. Garcia Live Mariachi. Come and enjoy professional wrestling, food booths, a petting zoo, and it's all happening at the city of San Juan Municipal Park. Fun for the whole family. Doors open at 3.30 p.m. Children under 10 are free. Live music starts at 6 p.m. Buy your tickets at eventbrite.com and reserve your VIP tables. It's a Memorial Day Grand Festival in San Juan, Texas. Don't miss it. Yo le gracias a los hermanos Caribe de Grupo Duelo y quiero mandar un saludo para toda mi gente del Valle de Texas y claro invitarlos a que nos acompañen este próximo sábado 29 de mayo. No se pierdan nuestra presentación en San Juan Municipal Park de la ciudad de San Juan. Va a ser una fecha inolvidable, mi gente. Así que vamos a festejar Memorial Day. No se lo pierda el duelo en San Juan. Nos vemos. Salud. ¿Qué tal amigos? Les saludo a Rogelio Campos porque es el grupo intenso y este 29 de mayo, sábado 29 de mayo, no te lo puedes perder, Memorial Day Grand Festival, atrás, atrás de la Basílica, no te lo puedes perder. Los amigos del Grupo Duelo, el Grupo Control, el Grupo Intenso, amenizando Memorial Day, no te lo pierdas. Te invitamos a partir de las 3 de la tarde hasta las 11 de la noche. Muchísimas gracias. It's going to be a fantastic event, and everybody's invited, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to get your VIP tickets if you don't have them. We have a table right up front. We're going to have some general admission tickets to give away right here on Hashtag PBT. So make sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. Also, to reserve their VIP tables, they can call 956-608-0611 or... 956-330-3061. All right. And on that same night on South Padre Island at the uh, beautiful auditorium right by the bay over there, Cole Wetzel is performing. Tickets are available for Cole Wetzel. It's an amazing show. If you've never seen this guy, you got to go check him out. It's fantastic. If you're in that area on South Padre Island during Memorial Weekend, you got to check it out. Check out this video. It's awesome. Cole Wetzel! Some artists break one or two rules. Cole Wetzel pretty much breaks them all. Saturday, May 29th, live in concert, Co Wetzel, South Padre Island at the Cameron County Amphitheater and Event Center. Special guest Giovanni and the Hired Guns. Get your tickets today at Boot Jacks Valley Wide and CoSPI.com. That's KOESPI.com. Co Wetzel at South Padre Island, May 29th. Powered by Brick Fire Pizza. That is going to be awesome. You need to get your tickets, and they're going fast, so get them soon. Then uh, on the 5th of June, Whiskey D will be at the Coral Reef on South Padre Island. It is a bike run, a poker run, and it's going to be fantastic. And it's a small place, so we're going to destroy that place. You better go to the Coral Reef on June 5th because on yes. June 6th, all there will be when you pass by there are ashes because we will destroy it, okay? We're going to destroy that little place, oh and we're going to have our good friend Rob Gracias and his band opening up. We hit the stage at 4 o'clock p.m., 4 to 5.30. So get there early. It's going to be an early party. We're going to get you started, and it's Whiskey D, man, in South Padre Island, June 5th, the Coral Reef. Then Felipe Sparza, if you want some comedy, June 12th, SPI Auditorium. Make sure you get your tickets for that. And then during 4th of July weekend on July 3rd, it's a Saturday night. I am really looking forward to this show. Me too. <laughs> Ice Cube and Be Real, Dr. Green Thumb from Cypress Hill. Le dicen Dr. Green Thumb, pio, porque le gusta mucho el... <laughs> el uh, ¿Tú sabes cigarrito? Este, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs. Ah, Bone Thugs. No son más que... Es no, no más un bone. one bone. Es bone un bone. Thugs Órale. And, yo creo que eran más bones. <laughs> Bone thugs, not bone thugs. It's, it's bone thugs. Uh, bone thugs and harmony. What are they? Saturday, July 3rd, SPI Auditorium and Video. We have a VIP table. 
Okay, and we have some front row tickets that we're going to be giving away Ooh, as well. Awesome. And we have general admission tickets. So this is the place to get all that. There's and so we, much going on. And if you can't get fired up for Ice Cube, man, I, you know, just seeing him on the movie Friday, I want to go check it out, right? Mm -hmm. But check out this video, man. It's awesome. Let's keep it gangsta tonight! Oye, el pío trevino estaba raising his hands y ya estaba listo para. <laughs> I thought stretching out, I thought stretching out, I thought stretching out. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some awesome t-shirts as well. We have the Asustame One Time t-shirt, okay? And we have the Telo Sequel Pro t-shirt, all right? It's a license plate. So if you want to get those shirts, you can go into the description and we'll give you all the details on that, all right? So that's what you got to do. And you can get some. And those shirts are going pretty fast. So you might want to do that, all right? So we've got Rally. What's going on, baby? How you doing? Hey, I don't have a camera on me today. But um, I want to say hi to everyone and welcome Pio and your lovely wife to our studios. Ah, Glad to have you. you guys. Thank you. Oh, we, before we get to Pio, we have a video because we got to show people the magic of Pio Trevino. Let's do it. Para todos que sigan divirtiendo, gracias a por acompañarnos hoy esta noche. We're all going to have a great time tonight. Para empezar, para todos mis amigos, la selección ranchera titulada Te Quiero Mucho. Pio, Pio Trevino, ladies and gentlemen, is here with us tonight. How's it going, Rock? It's going a lot better now that you're here, Pio. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. Man, oh, yeah, but it's, it's, Pio was saying that that video was taking about 80 pounds ago or something. Like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost a lot of weight. Yeah, since then. <laughs> no, dude, let me tell you, bro. You look the same as you do on that video. How long ago was that video? Seven years ago. He's looking at Bessie. His wife, Bessie's here with us. <laughs> <Hi>. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, me and Pio have uh, have built-in providers, all right? That's what we do. We got, we got our wives that are handling all our stuff. No? Yeah. ¿Verdad, Pio? <laughs> got to. Es lo que le digo a todos. No, mi wife es mi, va a ser mi provider. Me one time. Cállate la boca, shut up. So, so how long ago was that? Bessie, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. How long ago was that video? It's been about going on eight years. Yeah, going eight on eight years. years. Yeah, pretty close. And that was at Abraham's uh, studio of Q Production, right? Was, was that yeah. when they were having that live thing? That was right before my heart surgery also. Yes. Dude, I didn't even know you had that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had open heart surgery. 
I had a 100% clogged main artery. Man. And uh, I had my aortic valve was no good. No estaba pompeando bien. Y la, so, y la palabra pompeando, <laughs> papá. <laughs> yeah. So, este, you, you know, they took care of it. And now, mm -hmm. man, it's, I'm doing great. All Gracias that truck stop food for the years oh, and years man. you've been on the road, dude. I so, mean, how many years have, been, have you been on the road, Pio? Well, I started, I made my first dollar when I was 14. Well, and I'm 69 now. Wow, dude. <laughs> like, first of all, before we even get to that, are you originally from, you live in Kingsville, but is that where you were born? And you I was raised? born in Kingsville. See? But I was raised in the King Ranch, and which is just seven miles from there. And so, not even that far. and you're, you said how old are you? So you said uh, you're... 69. 69, so... So then you were uh, from what, what, that's 1959, 58, or, or no, what, what year is that, 52? Yeah, 52. That's when I was born, 52. 52, that's when you were born. Yeah. And you were born there on the King Ranch? Well, I was born in Kingsville mm -hmm. at the Claiborne County Hospital, but then I was, uh, my dad uh, worked there at the King Ranch, and all his family was from the King Ranch, and, yeah. you know. I've never known, I mean, I've known you for a long time since, ooh, 1985 when I first saw you at Studio 4 with Mariano Pilecki and his lovely wife when they ran that show, and he loved you to death, bro. I mean, that guy, you were his, you were his star, bro. I mean, Mariano was always talking yeah. really awesome about you. And he's in Houston. He's probably watching right now. Un saludito para Mariano yes, Pilecki y su familia. Este, que pues, uh, you know, fue una... He was a, a, an awesome outlet for our, our, our Tejano artists to yeah. be able to go and perform at his place every Sunday night. It was I just, just didn't like it whenever him and they, oh, Elena. <laughs> Elena, Elena, when they used to argue. Yeah. They and, went, and what the hell are they saying? Yeah, because they were Polish. And they, <laughs> yeah. And they used to, arriba tu poquito más el micrófono ahí. Right. There you go. Yeah, they were Polish. He comes, a revorcha, 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 revorcha. I was like, what the hell are they saying? I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> You know, and but I, they were great people. Man. Oh yeah, great man. people. Oh, and Mariano, Mariano was always getting. Like, siempre lo andan regañando a Mariano, la Elena, <laughs> chiva, porque Mariano used to. He loved the ambience yeah, of it. He loved yeah. having the drinks and talking and listening to music. He's uh, just. He used to call me Piño. 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 You ready? <laughs> but uh, the, he'd line up the tequilas. Uh huh. What was it that 188? What was that? The, Yeah, they, yeah, la, la, 1800. Ándale, hey, wait, 1800. <laughs> Puro jale bueno. Lo estoy esperando aquí para ti, pío, que tengas que estar un shot. No, hombre, I, I, I got a lot of respect for, for tequila and stuff like that now. <laughs> so do I. So 1952, born in Kingsville, and then your, your parents, uh, they were working, working there at the ranch? Okay, Dick. Yeah, my dad used to work as a horse trainer mm -hmm. for the King Ranch with uh, Thoroughbred Race Horses. Uh-huh. And uh, my mom, well, she was, she was from New York, and uh, that's where my dad met her. He met her in New York. Yeah. So, so they, how, how they met dad? in New York, and uh -huh. and because my dad went to go cut his hair, and my mom was a barber's daughter. Uh huh. So when he went to go cut his hair there, he met my mom. But what was your dad doing in New York? Was he is he originally he, from over he there? Went, he went. He would take the race horses to go run. Orale. In wow. in uh, Kentucky and Saratoga and. Wow, dude. Yeah. So your dad was one of those guys that knows horses left and right. Man. Well, th there's there's been I think twelve Triple Crown winners in the whole world, in the history of race horsing. Uh huh. And the King Ranch had one of them. Mm -hmm. It was called Assault, and my dad helped train that horse. He was considered a three-legged animal mm -hmm. because his right hind leg was like a mule. Wow. It was deformed. And my dad told the owner, you need to put him in the, in the races. Mm -hmm. This horse has heart. And they put him in the races. He went in and won. Wow, dude. That's amazing. Yeah. They just couldn't get any breed from him because he was sterile. Wow. You know? That is an amazing story, man. Yeah. And and from there, uh, my, my dad... My dad used to go at night, and he used to go sing in the nightclubs mm -hmm. with Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and all those guys. The, the crooners, Pack. man. Yeah, they used to call my dad the Mexican troubadour. Wow. And and uh, my dad got a contract a contract offer from uh, Columbia Records, and Columbia Records back then was the record company I to be with. I never knew this. Yeah. Wow. So my my dad wanted to 
record, but he was only 18. Mm -hmm. He couldn't sign a contract because he wasn't old enough. And he wanted to marry my mom, and he wasn't old enough to sign a marriage license either. Mm -hmm. So he had to fly to, back to Texas and ask my grandfather, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Dad, I need you to sign these two contracts. And my dad said, no. My grandfather said, no, he goes, I'm only going to sign one contract. And you're going to tell me which one to sign. So he decided to sign the marriage license. Wow. And he didn't pursue his music anymore from there. He didn't. <laughs> no, and, and I was so afraid because my dad had a thing about us making sure that we went to school and studied and became something. See. But he, he didn't want to see, see us trying to be musicians or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I would be playing, practicing and stuff with guys that were older than me. Mm -hmm. And then we started a band and then recorded in the song. And when you work with racehorses, they have a radio on each end of the barn mm -hmm. because it keeps the horses tranquil. Yeah, it soothes them. Yeah, and you have it on the same station, yeah. both of them. And all of a sudden, they started playing one of, one of my songs that, that I had recorded. And all the guys there used to... they. They used to call my dad Pana. Oi, Pana! I thought to Chamaco cantando. Wow. And I'm, I got, oh my God, my dad's going to find out. Oh, <laughs> oh <my laughs> bro. And, and, and he found out and he didn't say nothing, you know, because I think he felt that I accomplished something that he didn't, mm -hmm. you know. So that's where I took off, you Damn, know. Yeah, man, that is an amazing story, dude. Yeah. Wow. And uh, what was the song that came out on the radio? What was it? Do it you was, remember? Estoy en el rincón de una cantina. Tu recuerdo yo? Yeah, tu recuerdo wow, yo. Wow, man. That's an awesome song, man. <laughs> Hijo, so, y, y, y esa la ibas grabado donde en Corpus? ¿O donde la grabaste? So, because for it to be on the radio, it had to be recorded on. La the grabamos en un estudio que, que estaba ahí uh, cerquita de... de, de, de el agua en Corpus. Sí. Se llamaba Studio B. Okay. And that's where we went and recorded it. Uh-huh. And then uh, uh, then yeah. we did other, other recordings and Alice ahí con, con uh, ay, ¿cómo se llamaba el señor? Anyway, and Alice, you know, we did sí. several recordings and stuff. But, uh, you know, that's how, and we were known as, as uh, the, the band that we had three singers. We, do, we used to harmonize. Mm -hmm. And Como it was los so beautiful. Dinos, okay, los yeah, chachos. but it was so beautiful because... I used to see people crying when yeah. we were singing. And this is when I was 14, 15 years old, you know? Because it sounded angelic, bro. Yeah, it sounded very good. Yeah, and you guys were putting your heart into the singing. Yeah. You know, that's incredible, man. So uh, who was influencing you in music besides your father? I mean, like, what were you listening to uh, back well, it, in 19... It, my, you my were dad, 14, so this was like 50, 66? Yeah, my, my, dad used, my dad came from a family of... There were 13 siblings. Mm -hmm. And they all could sing. Some could play guitar, some yeah, could play yeah. violins. They, but they all, like on, on, on any special holiday, we used to make a big old ring. Well, they used to. I was Tomoko, so I was just little. Mm -hmm. And they used to make a ring, and one would sing a song, and then the next one would sing another song, you know? And that's, they just went around, and they were singing, and I'd be checking it out. And then uh, my grandfather, he used to be the chauffeur for Mr. Claybrook, the owner of the King Ranch. Okay. So he used to live not too far away from, from their house. And they had Trio Los Panchos go and perform there for them. That's a beautiful a group right there. Yeah. And then he sent Los Panchos to go to my grandmother's house to give her a serenade. Mm -hmm. And that was like, nombe. I, I, I was there listening to these guys singing. And I was, I was going like, wow, I hope one day I can do this. You know? Mesmerized. Yeah. And, and then from there, I, I, my roots really started with Conjunto Bernal. Mm -hmm. and, and Carlos Guzman. Carlos? Yeah. I mean, these guys, I used to idolize the way they, they sang and, and everything. And then I started, you know, trying it. But I never really had faith in, in my voice. Mm -hmm. I never did. Until La Movida. Well, let me tell you, um, you have a very unique voice, dude. I don't think anybody can emulate you. 
I haven't you heard know, anybody. Yet. It's one of those voices that nobody. I mean, th- there's some people that can be, you know, replicated. Yeah. I've never heard anybody be able to sing like you. Your song, your your voice is unique. I mean, it's like like none other. So you you actually, I mean, you you had that in you. Uh, I don't know if at the very beginning you were sounding like Trio Los Panchos and all that, because at the beginning, you know, we start emulating our, our yeah, favorite, what yeah. we listen to, what influences us. But you eventually get into, you know, your own style. So before Ricky Smith, from 66 on to like, uh, you know, after you heard the song uh, on the radio, what did you do after that? Did you continue? Did your dad say, you know yeah, what, we, you can we start playing or what? The, the name of that band was called Los Exitos. Okay. The Kingsville. And then... Our manager, which was our bajo player, Joe Alanis, which rest in peace, he's already gone. Mm-hmm. This guy found a job working at, the, at this plant. So the guy told us, you know, I'm not going to be able to be playing anymore because I'm not going to be able to take off. So from there, the band kind of broke up mm-hmm. and I went into rock and roll. Okay. I started rock and rolling. <laughs> and then uh, uh, it's funny, but back then they used to have a lot of concerts. Yeah. And they used to mix rock and roll and Tejano mm-hmm. concerts. Yeah. So I'd be playing with the rock and roll band, and then all of a sudden the guys there would see me with another band singing Spanish. And the guys, wait a minute, are you the same guy that was singing rock and roll just a while ago? Yeah. Well, how in the hell do you do that? I said, I don't know. I just love to sing. It's, mm-hmm. To me, singing is singing. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough that I can sing English and Spanish. Yeah. You know? And and more or less do anything anybody else can do because I love to sing. But, you know, we continued. And finally, I, I the same guys from that band that I was in, they were going to practice and they invited me to go. I went to go practice and come on, Pio. Man, what get- rock and roll songs were you doing back then? Some Three Dog Night? Or- <laughs> We, we used to do Three Dog Night. We used to do Rolling Stones. We yeah. used to do uh, Grand Funk. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm your captain. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Man, man. And, and and I love to do it. Deep Purple, uh-huh, you know. Yeah. Smoke on the, the water. water. Yeah. I got people singing rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, but, I mean, I love it. And, uh-huh. and, and then from there, I... I quit the rock and roll, and I started with this band. Well, you didn't the quit the band. rock and roll, bro, no, because it stayed in you. Yeah. But you incorporated it into your show. Yeah. I mean, I used to go see you. It was like watching a rock show. Yeah. But it was Tejano. Yeah. You were one of those guys. That, and then when you joined Ricky Smith, was bikes and leather and all this look <laughs> and the look and everything. Yeah. So the, the rock and roll was incorporated into your, your, your music and your style and everything. So then what happened right after that? The rock and roll, you said you... Uh, well... Uh, then we the same guys that were with Los Éxitos. Uh huh. We started another band, La Conexión Mexicana. And uh, and then there, we picked up this guy to come and manage us, mm-hmm. uh, Joseph Neros, and he came and picked us up. And and one of the reasons we really went with him was because the place where we were practicing, he used to own it. And then his compadre, his best compadre, was Johnny Gonzalez, the president of the biggest Tejano label, which was El Sarape Records. Orale. Yeah. So yeah. we he, we got him into the band. He got us to go record with the, la conecta. Yeah. So we went, and some of the guys don't tell him that he can't sing third. Yeah, third harmony. do it in but, the mic. But yeah, <laughs> but but he he went ahead and 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 he would do the third harmony. Uh huh. And and me and my cousin Pete, we would switch around because <laughs> my cousin Pete would sing the lead. Yeah. He didn't know how to sing segunda or uh-huh. tercera, so I would sing the segunda. And if I was singing a song that I was doing the lead. I would change from lead whenever we'd go into the harmonies to a segunda. Yeah. You know? That shit takes discipline, bro. Yeah. And then I remember one time we went to go record, and Tony La Rosa was 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 uh, helping us record. Mm-hmm. And Tony goes, hey, man, your cousin Pete says that he can't sing. He's got a flat ear. And whenever Pete would get a flat ear, he couldn't uh-huh. sing in pitch. Wow. So I would have to learn his part. Uh-huh. So I told Tony, well, you know what? Just go ahead and turn on the mic and, and I'll do the segunda first. He goes, how can you do the segunda first without hearing the primera? 
He goes, watch me. He goes, well, I'm not going to know if you're doing right or not because I, it's not going to make sense. And I said, just trust me. I go in there and I do the segunda first. He goes, well, I don't know, you know, now do the lead. Mm -hmm. I do the lead and the guy goes, oh, my God, how in the hell did you do that? And I'm going, because I figure one guy on one ear and I figure the other guy on the other ear. And that's how I do it. And wow. he goes, but how can you figure that out if you don't hear the voice? I said, I hear it in there, you know? Yeah. And, and it was a natural ability. Yeah. It's so, so it's something you, you were specially made to do that. <laughs> you know, yeah, not man. everybody can do stuff like that. And, and then like, 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 then, uh, I started recording. We, we well, we started another band. Mm -hmm. We called it Sangre Chicana. Okay. And it was basically the same guys from, from uh, La Conexión. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of guys different. And then, uh, uh. We tried it, we tried it, right, honey? We tried it. My wife, she gave us money so we could buy vestuario so we could wear something nice, you, wow. told, you know. And and then all of a sudden, you know, I was recording with Tony and uh, they wanted to put my picture with in the very front of the album. Uh -huh. And they had a light behind my hair and it looked like a gold lining around my curlies, you know, on my afro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had an amazing <laughs> afro, bro. <laughs> so the, 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 the album was going to come out like that. Uh -huh. And in the back, it was going to be the guys. Well, it so happened that the guy said, we don't care, man, as long as the album comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, when they, they used to call them flats back there, mm -hmm. back then. And they used to glue that in the very front of the album. Mm -hmm. But you, they, they sent me a, like about 100 flats so I could yeah. give them away, autograph them. Yeah. And one of the guys, one of the guys goes, No, pues ahora sí te vas a creer porque, you know, estás ahí en el retrato. Yeah, yeah, pues eres el secret. And, and, I, and I said, you know what, dude? I said, that's why I asked you guys uh -huh. if you guys were cool. So I said, you know what, dude? Forget it. Yeah. And I got out of that. And then my producer, Rick Garcia from Hacienda Records. See, si, Rick Garcia. Yeah, I have an uncle that he's from New York, and he used to sing in the nightclub circuit over there. Mm -hmm. And I sent him a couple of songs, and he goes, he goes, I got this guy that's a, a billionaire, and he wants to pick you up. But he doesn't want you to sing English yet. He wants you to sing Spanish. And then you're going to make a 180 degree turn and you're going to sing English and you're going to freak everybody out. Yeah, yeah. So we were working on a CD. I mean, not a CD. Back then there were no CDs. We were working on an album and I was going to take it to New York mm -hmm. and become a big star. Yeah. Well, little did I know, I was working in the oil field and I went to, to Corpus And I decided to go to the studio to go see, say hi to Rick. Uh -huh. And I went to the studio and Rick goes, oh man, there was this band that recorded last night. And man, they can't sing, but they have original material and it sounds killer. And he said, you want to hear it? And I said, yeah. So he started playing it and they had left their songbook there. And, and I went and I, I, I heard the song And I, I told Rick, I said, what do you want to do? He goes, go in there and see what it's going to sound like. Mm -hmm. I went in there, dude, and I sang. And the people that were in there, his wife was there and a couple of his friends, a drummer and a guitar player. And they were all jumping up and down. And I'm going, what's going on? Come and hear it, man. Come and hear it. It sounds like it's a different band and everything. Yeah. And all you did is put your voice. Yeah. And I heard it and I'm going like, wow, man. That's when I started liking my voice. Yeah. I was I could never trust that it was good enough. And what band was this? La Movida. La Movida. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and check, check this out. And then. Quiero llorar, bro. While, while, while I was singing it. While I was singing it. Rick <laughs> goes. Rick, Rick goes. Hey, Pio, do the Popeye thing. Because we used to play around. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I'll, I'll save you. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> And I, I did that, man, and and I was I was uh, like about two weeks later, I was driving andaba acá in in in, in Norias, mm -hmm. and I was coming back to the highway, 
and I was driving my truck, my company truck. See. Sí. And I turned on the radio, and they were playing KCCT from Corpus. Uh huh. And they used to be called Jalapeño radio. See. Sí. So all of a sudden, the, these girl background comes out, Jalapeño hit number one. And they start playing Cada Noche. I'm Cada like, Noche. I'm oh. like, oh my gosh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. This song right here. Don't worry, I'll, I'll save you. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is great, dude. Yeah, I man. love it. You know, as a matter of fact, I got to call somebody right now because they want to talk to you. Oh. Let's see. Let's, let's give them a call. I want to send a special shout out to Jay Cervantes, Krabby Crab, Miguel Ramirez, JJ Lopez, Sal in the House, Dario Puig, and Carmen Benavides. Thank you guys mm. for joining us tonight. All right. We should be answering right now. Hello. Yeah, is this uh, Richard Smith? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? What's How going on? So you're Richard Smith Jr., right? That would be Richard Smith Jr.? Yeah, I'm, I'm- I'm a uh, little Ricky. Little, little Ricky, Ricky Smith, Smith, man. He I, would be. Doing, he would be a third. The third. Yeah. Yeah, because his third his grandfather's third. name was Rick also. Orale. And then yes, Rick. sir. Yes, sir. My grandfather was first, but uh, my dad. I met you at hey, at at the Villarreal in Macallan, right? Man, I was probably a child back then. Uh, yeah, yeah, you were you were young when I met you. You yes, told sir. me, you said Ricky's my dad. I remember that. Hey, yeah. Phil. Yeah. Hey. Hey, I, hey, this friend of mine, man, he told me uh, you were going to be on this show, brother. And I, I reached out to to uh, um, to PVT and I I left a, a little message, man. I, I wanted to thank you, brother. I wanted to thank you on behalf of like my the Smith family for your uh, for you, your huge contribution to my father's legacy. And I just his legacy, but La Movida's legacy and the music's legacy, brother. Like when whenever I think of La Movida. I hear your voice, brother. So I, I just wanted to thank you, bro. My dad passed away recently, brother. And, but I know he always wanted to do a Magic and Movida tour, brother. He thought people would love that, man. And I just I wanted to thank you, brother. I wanted you, I wanted to do that myself. And we were going to play together at the Heritage Park in Corpus. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then your dad, he had that pacemaker and it was low, low on battery. So the doctor, oh, really? the doctor had told him that he would advise him not to try and do the gig. So they didn't yeah. do the gig, and man. Uh, and then I saw yeah. him. I saw him later, you know, at a store, the Stripes, where he used to live close by. Right, and, right. And I saw him there, and I was very saddened when I found out we lost him. Yeah, brother. Yeah, it was a sad day for me too, man. But um, at, at least you know the music lives on, brother. La Movida lives on, and then. Yeah. Uh, you're a huge part of that, brother. Like I said, man. Like I said, thank you, brother. Well, I, just from evil, I, I, have, I, I have to say, man, that, that out of all the work that I've ever done in my life with music, that was the best time I ever had. With, with, hey, hey, you guys were so ahead of, of like, the time, brother. Like, there's no yeah. band to this day, like, La Movie. You know, and I'm not just saying it because that's my father, brother, but the, what y'all did back in the day... It's it's still hard to to outdo you know to this day, brother. So yeah, you know, it's gonna Thanks, live man. forever. Well, Pio does a tribute yeah, and, and to La Movida band. Yeah, every, we do. We do a gig. tribute every time we perform. We do a tribute to La Movida. The the, the uh, what? Movida party. The panty party mix. panty mix. We always play right. that. And, and it was a, the the music is endless, brother. You know, yeah. the music is endless. People love it still to this day. So. Hey Richard, I want to thank you for reaching out to me, bro, and uh, and making this uh, moment happen. You know, when I when you messaged me right away, I sent you my number. I said, look, yes, you 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 know, we gotta we gotta talk to Bo. You gotta tell him yourself. And and uh, I thought tonight would be a perfect moment. That <laughs> man, I was like, I'm ready to break down, bro. That sounded beautiful, man. Well, that means a lot to hey, me. Hey, I really appreciate you, appreciate you letting me do this, man, because it it means a lot to me too, man. It really does. Thank you. All right. And uh, hey, like you said, your dad's uh, memory work lives on forever. Yeah. And Bill's still carrying the torch, man. And he's playing his music. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually some music that actually uh, influenced and uh, paved a lot of roads for a lot of Tejano artists, man. Your dad was doing something that was unheard of, which was adding so much guitar into yeah. the into the music. 
and making right. it sound good. I mean, nobody would ever think that. Everybody had their, you know, cookie cutter t- style of making songs, and this is the formula, right. and this is the way we're going to do it. Your dad was an innovator. He went in there, and he had the rock and well, roll they look. Well, they the- told us, we want you all to play simple commercial music. Okay. And then, yeah. and then we started playing it, you know, the way, you know, we did it. Yeah. And I, because I remember you wearing those big old kiss shoes and yeah. stuff you know yeah. i mean it, how in the I, hell did you walk in those things well, <laughs> i i wasn't i wasn't that kind of a guy uh-huh. but i did it because it was wa- the look it was yeah. the image it was the package that was yeah. there and you all had a pretty great following as well man yeah. Villarreal, everywhere you all played there was a well it, to me it, every place that we performed at whoever uh-huh. used to have because maz used to have most of the records mm-hmm uh-huh. And, and, and on attendance. And I remember when we started playing, we started taking all of those records away from yeah, them. Dude, yeah, dude, yeah. And, and everything was working, you know. Yeah. I was telling uh, Richard here that uh, the very first interview I did on radio was his dad, Ricky Smith. I was wow. working with Raul Hernandez at a little station by Foy Supermarket in Mission called uh, KITM Superstar 105.5. So I was working at, at, in Harlingen Graveyard, and then I got fired from KIWW, and Raul Hernandez uh, called me because uh, Carlos Guzman's wife was the secretary, and she told him, you should get him. He sounds like Mano San Roman. He'd be a great asset to the station. Yeah. So he called me up. I was like two years in the radio, and he puts me middays. And then one day he says, uh, hey, cuñao, jungle, because he changed my name to Jungle Jim, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, Jungle. Ahorita vas a hacer una entrevista, you're going to do an interview. And I go, yeah, with who? With Ricky Smith. Oh, okay, I remember him from uh, Studio 4. Okay, cool. So he shows up, and we're sharing a microphone, and I have a paper like this, dude. And I'm like, a la mediodía, carnal. It was like at 12 noon, and I was like this. And Ricky just looks at me, and he goes, you're andas medio nervous, no? <laughs> I was like, dude, you're my very first interview ever, dude. That's like my very first on-air radio interview wow. was your dad, Richard. So, man, there's a lot of stuff here in this room right now, dude. A lot of connection, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, just, just real quick before I go, funny story. We, we have moved to Detroit. You know, Detroit's a whole other world, brother. And people that, like boosters, people that would, like, steal things, they would show up at my house with 2,000 brand-new panties because they knew my dad would buy all of them <laughs> and pull up with all of them. <laughs> they show up with trash bags of, of brand new patties at a time, brother. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Richard, God bless you, man. And God, you've bless, got, you, God bless you, brother. You've got my number, whatever you need. I'm here. I'm just a text away, man. And I'm really glad yes, I got sir. to get you connected with Peel here tonight, all right? God bless I'm, you, brother. I'm happy too, brother. Thank you. Orale, you, you have to brother. Yes, Dios te bendiga, carnal. Yes, sir. Tell your mother hello. Yes, tell your mother hello. You got it. Thank you. God bless you. How's that, Pio? That's great, man. What an amazing, Unexpected. powerful moment. Wow, I mean, man. Todos llorando, carnal. <laughs> 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 yes. man. You know, uh, what are the, some of the memories you have of Ricky, bro? Oh, man. One time, <laughs> we had the motorhome, uh-huh. the bus, and it had a thing for the sewer. Uh-huh. To get the sewer stuff out, Uh-oh. <laughs> and 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 we, some one of the guys wanted to use the restroom so bad, and I I went and looked and I said that thing is full, man. We need to get rid of it. Well, 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 because it, it, <laughs> instead of instead of going and disposing it somewhere, uh-huh. we just went to the other side of the of the shoulder. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then and then Rick went back over there and he says, "What do I do, Pillard?" He used to call me Pillard. Pillard. Yeah. <laughs> And and I said, just go back over there, and it's got those orejitas. You take the orejitas off, uh-huh. and you have a thing, and you pull on it, uh-huh. and the shit's gonna come out. <laughs> and the and the guy goes and pulls on it, and and he goes, nothing's coming out. And then he got down to to see why, and all of a sudden, man, that was. But you, I. I it, <laughs> And, and I, I saw Rick just jump back like a cat. Whenever you do a cat, he uh-huh. and he just jumped back like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that, man. Yeah. That was a wow. great moment. And what, what happened? How long were you with with Ricky and his band? You were with him for couple a while. Of couple of years. A couple of years. A couple of years, yeah. It was a, it was a, short, uh, a short tenure that you had. Yeah, with and, and, and it, it's, it's funny because, you know, it all kind of like happened... 
to where we were not mad at each other or anything like that. We just, we, we were playing in Houston and, uh, we were playing with the Bandidos de Albert Lopez. Okay. And they opened up for us. We must have had close to 2,000 people in that place. Wow. And then uh, we came and performed, and we killed it big time, the first set. And then we went back. To, I went back to my bus. I got in my bus, and we were in there, and some of the guys went and indulged in liquor, and they got so messed up that when they got on stage to do our last set, they couldn't even stand. That's that sucks, bro. So, so we we were kind of. I, I was kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have. I and, mean, and uh, we you sang, should have. We you... sang an hour and a half like oh, that. Yeah. And 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 then after I finished my sh my show, I went and told them, "That's it. You, you know, no, that's I'm not, not professional. Doing, I'm not. Man. I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. You know." That that's not the way I am. You were the face of the of the band. You were the singer. You were the voice. Uh, Ricky Smith was, uh, you know, yeah. would share that that, uh, that that is with you as well. Well, my and problem was also that that um, I I was I had like several years ahead of these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd already been you yeah. already paid some dues yeah. and stuff. And and when 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 all this happened, it's like I said, man, I I have to. I have to show what I want to do and what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And if I have somebody that's not going to do it the way I want to do it, well, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And it was working so good so far. So you were willing to mentor them in a sense. Yeah. And, and, I, and show them some I of the stuff you learned. I remember when, when yeah. I quit the band, uh -huh. my wife told me, she goes, honey, swallow your pride and call Ricky and tell him, let's try it again, dude. Mm -hmm. Because... Remember, honey? They used to call us all the time. Mm -hmm. Man, you guys need to get together again. Yeah. Radio stations calling us. You need to get together again. So I called Rick and I, I told him, hey, Rick, you know, let's try it again, dude. And he goes, are you serious, Pillard? And I told him, yeah. He goes, oh, man. He goes, yeah, man. And they had just hired uh, Ruben Botteo. Okay. And Ruben had quit his job. To go with them yeah so, so they had a, they had a gig like two days after i talked to him and he goes we're playing here in corpus do you still do you need to practice i said no man i know everything you know i i know the songs i still I remember it's yeah. like riding a bike yeah. dad and so um i went i was gonna take off to go to the gig and i remember i called rick and i asked him i said hey man i'm taking off going over there and he goes oh we're not going to need you after all, dude. He goes, we're going to stay with this other guy. Mm -hmm. And I felt this little. <clears throat> yeah. You I felt, felt like you'd been set up or yeah. something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought he was going to go for it and, yeah. and everything was going to be good again. You yeah. Know? Well, he was, he was, I, I can imagine he was in a, between rock and a hard place. You yeah. Know, having to make that decision and that guy, you know, quitting his job. Quitting and, his job. And it's something like and, musicians can't tell another musician bad news. I mean, it's no. just like. There's this thing that we have that we'd rather have them hear it through the outside source than to go right up front and tell yeah. them that. And, yeah. and I remember, Rock, when, whenever this change was happening, I remember they, they Rick got Ruben Boteo, and I remember Rick Garcia, mm -hmm. my producer. The guy from Hacienda. Yeah, from Hacienda. He says, you know, I'm going to have to audition different voices vocals because mm -hmm. they got to sing like you yeah and, and nobody could do but ruben was one of the closest ones okay yes I ruben agree. was one of the closest ones mm -hmm. and to me i mean because i knew ruben for years and he was a real good ballad singer mm -hmm. real good ballad singer and then i heard him doing rancheras and more or less i could see that they were telling him sing like this guy and and he was he was the closest that that ever got there, you know. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's something that, you know, if it would have happened, maybe things would have been different. You know, um, 
God has better plans and bigger plans, yeah. dude. You know, I mean, you can't, you know, you try you, your best. You made it, you made an attempt and uh, it didn't work out. Well, it's just like, like somebody loves you. That song. Oh, damn, that song was great. Dude. <laughs> well, I recorded that song. Somebody loves you in 1975 with La Conexión Mexicana. Mm -hmm. And it that's what we named the, t the album. Somebody loves you. And it sold like crazy. And, and then when I joined La Movida, I asked the guys, Hey dude, let me do this song again. You know, I did it back in 75. I can do it again in 1979. Yeah. So the guys go, nah, we don't want to be playing something from somebody else like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, that was a big hit. Yeah. So they didn't do it, you know. Well, then when I made my band Magic, mm -hmm. that's when I said, okay, well then I guess I'm calling the shots now. So I recorded it again and man. And it was English and Spanish. And Spanish. It was yeah. like, it was bilingual. Bilingual. And everybody, it, they would always ask me for this song at Studio 4, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs you. So then after Boteo, after Ricky said, you know what, we're going to stick with Boteo, uh, you said, you know, even though you felt this small, you said, well, I got to move forward. Yeah, and, and, and I started looking for band members, mm -hmm. and it was so hard, man. Because there in Kingsville, we have the college, A&M. And there's a lot of musicians there from the Valley, from everywhere. Yeah. and But you get a, a good musician, and he had other thoughts in his mind. Yeah. So you, you, you couldn't stick with that same guy. You had to find somebody else, and we kept on. You have to find somebody that, that follows your vision, you yeah. know, that, that sees what then feels what you sees your idea. Yeah. And that way they feel they, they feel confident in it, and they want to follow you, and they know it's good, yeah. and it's going to be happy. Yeah. So then you finally found somebody? Yeah, we found uh, my – we had a bass player, Willie Cuer. He was my bass player. We could not find a keyboard player. Mm -hmm. Willie tells me, Pio, can I try playing the keyboards? And I told him, you know how to play? He goes, basically, I know, you know, but I've never done it. So he went and bought every keyboard that the keyboard player from Maz had. Mm -hmm. He went and bought everything exactly like it. And then he started playing. And then we went and recorded and, you know, I told him, if you got time to to tell me that you, you're going to try, I got time to listen to make you do it. Yeah. And he did it, you know. Show me the effort. Yeah. Let's do it. El Magazine, Amigo, Esa Mujer, all those songs, man, you know, this, this guy put out. I and love that song, El Magazine. Whose idea was that song, man? Luis Silva. Luis Silva? He, he went straight to my house when I was nobody. And he comes up to me and he tells me, he goes, he was with Bob Grieber, uh -huh. the, the, the owner of the record company. Yeah, guys, was, he was with CBS, Cada, I think. Cada, Cada Records. Cada Records, yeah. Yeah. And he comes to my house, both of them, and we have a song here that we want you to, to check out. They had already offered it to Mas. Mm -hmm. And they had it like for six months and they didn't do anything with it. I could have heard Mas do this song too. Yeah. So we went ahead and did it like that. And nombre. Pegó, bro. The Bien. song is about a, a guy that meets a woman, and she ends, and then he buys this magazine, and she's in it, and it's yeah. one of those nudie magazines, right? Well, you know, it, it was a... a, a Un playboy. Or this, I think this is what Luis told me. that It was a girlfriend that he used to have in, in high school. Uh-huh. And, and then when, when they graduated, they didn't see each other anymore. Mm -hmm. And then he was in California somewhere, and he opened a, a magazine, and she was in there. Naked, I don't know, oh, okay. but she was in there. It, you know? it, it got, I, I always thought that it was in a, in a magazine. I don't, I mean, I could be, it's my, my mind is in the gutter, probably, you know, <laughs> for sure. Because I always thought everybody always thought it was like he saw, yeah, the yeah. magazine, yeah, que yo nunca compraba. right? Yeah. I couldn't believe my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Qué sorpresa llevé. Yeah. Yeah. She was in there. La mujer que yo amé. Estaba retratada. Estaba retratada. <laughs> en un magazine yo me la encontré y no traía nada. There you go.
you go. That's what it no was. No traía nada. No traía nada, papá. Okay. <laughs> no, traía, no traía dinero. Sí. <laughs> Aquí tengo el magazine, mira. Ah, no te creas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that song was very popular, and I think the lyrics and the whole story yeah. of it was. Yeah. And so, did you record, was that like one of the first hits you recorded with? Uh, that with was the first hit. The very first hit. The very first hit. And that was what, 1980, something like that? 80. 1980. And that's where it all started for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because the 80s were, man, you were busy. And and then, like, like what I started doing is, like, I was always impressed with when you speak the correct Spanish. Uh-huh. You know? La letra and all that stuff. And, and, and that wasn't, that was what was missing a lot in Tejano music. Yeah. So what I did is I went with... Roberto Carlos, uh -huh. Julio Iglesias, uh -huh. esa mujer, Roberto Carlos, amigo, uh -huh. you know, I started taking their songs that international yes. people would would relate to. Yes. So I, I started doing that, and and I think I was one of the first bands that did that, and then everybody caught on, and everybody started doing it. Joe Lopez and yes. Jimmy started doing that. Yes. And all these guys, because they were doing just regular, yeah. you know, uh, spa, you know, the text mix. Uh, lyrically well when i met when i met joe and jimmy uh -huh. they were the bel airs oh that was back and, in and the raul 70s. hernandez uh -huh. took us to this club where he used to manage it was the called rickshaw. the rickshaw uh -huh, in Hardington. and we went and performed there uh -huh. and and the group of bel airs <laughs> joe and jimmy they opened up for us wow and that's when i first met joe uh -huh. and then all of a sudden they they changed it to mass and stuff and i remember joe telling me ching up you Every time you go up there and you you get a song out, I'm going like, este va tocando otra vez, because that was his competition, uh -huh. and I'm going like, no man, there's room for all of us, bro. Si. You know, there's room for all of us. The more the better. For yeah, our because culture, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think Joe Lopez is a great singer and Jimmy Gonzalez, amazing himself. Yeah. I mean, these guys. Jimmy had a great voice too, man. Yeah, and there's not ever going to be a guitar player to strum that guitar like Jimmy. No. Never. And, and the creative uh, process that he knew, like, to a T. I'd see him in the studio with his head back asleep and telling the guy in, you know, on the board, uh, okay, put over here. And I, he's, like, directing the engineer on what to do with his eyes closed, like, oh, yeah. exhausted from he, being he in the studio. He was the main element in that band. Yeah. The main element. Yeah. And, and uh, once they split up, uh, you know, Joe didn't do as well as Jimmy. Jimmy struggled a little bit, but Jimmy ended up having oh, yeah. the longevity. Jimmy, Jimmy got it through, man. Yeah. I remember the, I went to the, the awards, Tejano Awards, and it was the first year that Jimmy was going to try it on his own. Mm -hmm. And he got up there and, and, and he took the cake. He won. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I started crying yeah. because I was so happy for him. Yeah. You know? and and awesome. And from then on, it's like, I, I think uh, uh, we've been the ones to pave the road yes. for all these Tejanos out there. And, yes. and there's uh, now you mix the conjunto with the Tejano and all this. And, and Cumbia and stuff yeah, like that. It's, yeah, it's great because that's how I started. I started with bajo sexto and accordion. Yeah. And, and, but then I wanted to sing rock and roll. And then you had El Magazine, yeah, which was and, a rock and, and roll And it's hard song. to sing rock and roll with a bajo and accordion. Yeah. So... I had to have a guitar player that could play guitar, rock and roll, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it it's it's uh, it's something to to think about when when you you're growing up and you have all these other guys that are working with you. I was six years younger than any of my band musicians, and these guys were listening to me, mm -hmm. you know. Because they like my ideas, they like the way I thought and everything, mm -hmm. and and from there I, I I started going like, wow man, this is great, you know. I love to go record, and and the only thing I don't like about playing is the road, mm -hmm. you know. I How mean, did you do it, Pio? I mean, on the road. I mean, it's like I used to say, you know, the American rock industry. They tour for a year and a half, and then they take two years off. Yeah. You guys never took days off, man. You guys played in Christmas, New Year's. You all were playing My nonstop. wife used to book me six times a week. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and it's... But you were in demand, bro. Yeah. 
I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta get remember, while the going is good. You I know? remember one time in Paz Descanse, Raúl Hernández, right? Uh -huh. The guy asked me, he goes, Oye, Pío, tengo una tocada que quiero que hagas. Digo, está bueno, dame la fecha. Pues me dio la fecha y dije, no puedo. Tengo una, una boda uh -huh. que tengo que hacer. Hey, go neutral. Go neutral y canceleles. What? Dije, dude, I don't do that, dude. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. Hey, dude. I'm telling you to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm Raul Hernandez, and I'm telling you to yeah, do yeah, that. Because yeah, yeah. he knew me since I was a kid. Yeah. So when I went to the rickshaw, I was 14 years old, 15, yeah. something like So he felt you were indebted to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I can't do it, man. Mm -hmm. He goes, bueno, we're going to pull out all your music mm -hmm. from KIWW. Okay. And I told him, I said, well, you know what? If you want to pull it out, that's up to you. He had all the guys, that DJs and everybody... Take my albums and throw them in the trash. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, that way, no. How long did like, that last? Like about a month. Yeah. And then he calls me. He goes, tú ganaste, cabrón. <laughs> me dice Raúl, tú ganaste, cabrón. <laughs> and, and, he, and he did it. And he, that, he had a lot of pride, bro. Siempre, and Raúl, you know, he was a six foot two, some guy. <laughs> he's a big guy. He had a lot of pride. I'm yeah. surprised. But he called you. That's amazing, dude. That's yeah. great. He, he, he just, he said, okay, está bueno. ¿Qué quieres? Vamos a darle. Yeah. Dije, pues, dude, I mean, yeah. la gente. No, he understood. Dije, uh, you wouldn't want for me to do that to you, to cancel yeah. you for somebody else. Yeah, but you know, it's like they say, you know, el que, el que no habla Dios no lo oye. Just try it, and if it, the worst he can, you can say is no. And, yeah. then, and then he just played that hardball game. But, you know, that happens a lot in the industry. Yeah. I mean, the industry, I mean, it's a, how, 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 How is it? How have you been able to be in the industry so long, dude? With you know, there's so many crazy stories in the business side. I mean, of course, you've got your wife that's watching out your back, you know, watching your back 110. Well, I, I don't think I would have gotten this far without her. I would I, believe me, bro. That is awesome, Bessie. We we appreciate you, that's and a we team thank effort. you. It's a team yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me tell you, it's not easy, uh, you know, handling a musician and a husband at the same time. My wife is the same. She handles a lot of my, you know, my stuff. And sometimes it gets kind of hectic. She goes to the studio with me. And, and if she doesn't like the way I did it, she, hey, you need to do that again. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm, I could be hard-headed. Yeah. But when it comes to her, I got to listen to yeah. her. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, she's not doing anything to hurt you. No. She wants you to, you know, yeah. she, she's got your back. That is amazing. How did you meet Bessie? How did that happen? It was a, they used to call them beer bus. Yes, yes. In Kingsville on a Wednesday, Wednesdays. Yes, I had flown in from California uh -huh. one evening and just my friend and I, we went to the beer bus and Pio and his friends were there. We were just hanging out. It was already towards the end of the gig. And, and, I, and I, I, don't, I don't like to dance. Uh huh. <laughs> so this friend of mine that I used to hang with, See. real handsome guy and everything, uh -huh. he goes, hey, dude, I'm going to go dance with that chick. And I told him, I said, hey, dude, Please, dude, let me go dance with her. Uh -huh. I want to go dance with her, but I'm trying to get, you know, to, to do it. <laughs> and so I went and danced with her. Yeah. And and uh, we danced that song, Just to be close oh, to you, girl. girl. That's oh! and, <laughs> and it all started there, man. I mean, it's, gosh. And 45 that's years a, later. Yeah, that's 45 Commodore. years yeah, later. A that's the Commodores, I think, man. Yeah, Commodores. Yes. Yeah, we got we got four daughters and one son. Yeah. And 19 grandkids. That's incredible. That's a blessing, Pio. Yeah. And you got a great legacy you're leaving behind, um, and, you know, with the music and all yeah, that. I mean, it's I mean, just amazing. Once I retire from my job. You're never going to retire, bro. Well, no, not the singing job. Oh, okay. The, <laughs> I was like, what? Because I'm, I'm I've heard that story before. A lot I'm, of times. I'm an electrician by trade. Uh -huh. That's what I do. Uh -huh. I've been doing it for 21 years and with the same company. Uh -huh. But uh, I think I'm going to have to call it a, call it quits because I want to spend time with my wife and my kids, man. Yeah. Were you? But, but you weren't working back in the 80s when you were just doing music six days I've a week. I've always yeah. worked. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yep. Because, when, man, dude, it's tough, 
bro, being on the, on the road and working. I mean, my <laughs> wife and I, we're like at our wit's end. You know, she has a, a full-time job. I got a full-time job. We do this on the side. Then we had the band, and we're out there all weekend. And we get here Sunday, and we got to clean the bus, and we got to put it in. We got to put all our merch together. We got to mail all this stuff. Monday morning, we got to get up in the morning and start it all over again. And we've got a show yeah. every night at night, and we got to be preparing for the show with scripts, ideas, imaging, pictures, and all that. And it just like we, it gets to a point where we're not like, is there light at the end of this tunnel? You know, <laughs> there it all is. becomes second nature. It does. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. that's what it is. Yes. And so, I mean, I don't know how you could have done it like that, bro. That's crazy. Well, determination. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, we uh, with, work ethic, man. Yeah, well, I mean, ever since I was a kid, you know, they they used to tell, you know, my parents, my uncles, they used to all tell me, you know, wherever you're gonna put that little butt of yours, you know, that's gonna be your stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. So you got to do a good job with whatever you do. So whatever I did, I mean, I used to work with race horses at the King Ranch. I used to work with the windmills at the King Ranch. I used to work with, uh, I, I was a caterpillar operator mm -hmm. and uh, tractors, anything. I mean, it, it's, and then I, I even went with air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And then finally I went to electrical. You're a jack of all trades. Yeah. Yes, and, 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 yeah, because I've even been a mechanic too, you know. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> but, I mean, but you learn all these trades yeah. on the road. Yeah, you you got to be. You're driving your motorhome, and <laughs> yeah. you're driving your motorhome. All of a sudden, something breaks. Yeah, and the guys in the band don't get under the bus. <laughs> it's not their bus; it's my bus. Yeah, uh -huh. So I'll be under the bus and on the under a puddle of water, working, fixing a drive shaft or something yeah. like that. You know. Well, just be careful with the sewer pipe, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened to your friend over there? <laughs> oh, man. That I'll let Bessie do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, so you're still playing. You're still performing. Uh, I heard you were out here in Palmview uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Yeah, in yeah. Bucanas, man. That's awesome to hear that you're still out here jamming, bro. Yeah. We, uh, this past weekend, we were in Laporte, mm -hmm. and uh, man, the people there were jamming with us, and and then uh, we'll this da week, this weekend, we'll be in Dallas. Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then the following weekend, we're going to, I think, San, San, San Benito. Benito. Shooters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, we've and got a lot of private parties coming up. Yeah. That's incredible. That's a awesome. blessing, man. Mm -hmm. And and check this out. When when my my new CD came out, it came out on the 13th. 3rd, 13th. The 3rd. What's the name of the single? Uh, March, March the 13th. March the 13th. <laughs> What's the name of the single, Pio? Um Esos besos, esos labios. Esos labios. Let me see. Is it is it on, on YouTube and stuff? It's yeah, gotta be. it's it's on Freddie Records. Okay, Freddie's doing them. Yeah. It's todo, man. I mean, I'm all right. Yeah, it should be here. We'll look for it right here. And uh, we got a lot of people in the chat zone, babe. Right? Yes, we do. We have Mario Flores, Carmen Benavides, Sally J, Danny Herrera, Abel M, Shadow Boo. Mario Flores says. Uh, Rock, ask a POV does plumbing too. You know, but, uh, <laughs> he probably does. Yes, yes he he does. To. I have to do that. I have a house. Yes, hey. right. <laughs> that, I know. I know. Pio does plumbing. You know why? Porque Pio es la mera pipa, hey. <laughs> <laughs> This is a brand new Pio Trevino. Check it out. Let's hear a little bit of it. Esos labios on Freddie Records. That 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 song is uh, Freddie's song. Well, it's yeah. called Orgullosa Mujer. Orale. A little bit of it. Yo me propuse a conquistarte sin saber que todo lo tenías, dinero y sociedad estabas muy alto y yo un pobre. You could tell El Compas is Freddie Martinez all over. No? Compas, <laughs> uh, I can almost hear, Como la quiero. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you got to go to YouTube or go to Spotify. Uh, go to any of your musical streaming services and download the Pio Trevino y Magic new album, the complete album on Freddie Records, Esos Labios, and, uh, and, and, and stream it. Listen to it. Put it in your playlist. 
And uh, every time cuando prendas el bote y te prendes el bote y te invitas los compadres y las comadres y todo, y los nietos y todo para la casa, préndelo y pon la música de Pío Treviño porque es pura música alegre y es música de una leyenda de la música tejana que, you know, I just got, I have to tell you, uh, Pío, that, man, I just want to, I appreciate you dedicating your life to our industry and to our culture And uh, just hearing your stories of growing up in the King Ranch and how you started singing in the radio, uh, popping up, the song popping up on the radio when you were, you know, your yeah. dad found out. I mean, that's just, it's it's a gem, dude, to be able to know that information. That's great, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, and then like, like this, Esos Labios, mm -hmm. it's a song that I wrote. And I wrote it for my wife mm -hmm. because I... Every time I kiss her lips, I want to kiss them more. Oh. So I, I made a song for Aww, Esos Labios. Is that, the, let me see. Well, I have the complete album. I'm looking for the song. Esos Labios. Is that the second song on there? It's or? the last one. I think it's, it's a, the last one. Okay, let me see if I can move it forward. And uh, let's see here. Let's see, it's, it might be this. So it's the last song, the last track on the album? No, is I think it's the one before it. The one before it? Okay, let me see. Is it this one? No. Esa la cumbia? Is it after? No. All right. That's, that's it, it, that's it, that's it. Let, yeah, this is a song that feel. This song is uh, called Esos Labios. It's the title track of the album. Uh, you can find it once again on Spotify and YouTube. And it's a song that Pio wrote for his wife because every time he kisses her, He, he wants, wants to more. Just, he just wants more and more, man. <laughs> What an incredible journey between you two and your kids and your family and your music and the way your wife has supported your life, man. It's it's just fitting to have both yeah. of you here on the show tonight, man. Well, thank you for having us. Yes. Thank you. Let's take a listen to this song. Theo wrote it for Bessie. Love it. Tú eres bella y tan hermosa Dueña de mi corazón, yo te amo con locura y me llenas de pasión en la mañana que despierto, yo me siento muy feliz cuando pienso. Those are beautiful words for you. That's awesome. I'm really so happy that you're recording. You. You're putting music together, Pio, and you're still going at it, man. It's yeah. awesome. Babe, bring down the bring down the um the chat. There was somebody that asked uh, Pio a question. A uh, little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, it was about a truck. I said, Ruben Avila says, can you ask Pio what happened to his truck with Abracadabra? Did you have a it, truck? It slipped over. It did? Yeah. So you had a truck that had Abracadabra yeah, in it? Yeah, I had like Abracadabra. Album? Pio Trevino with a, a magic one hand, uh -huh. and then it said Abracadabra. And, and what happened to it? Or was it flipped over? Well, you weren't in it when it did, did it? No, it didn't. No, it, it, we, as a matter of fact, we were just leaving Kingsville. We were coming towards the valley. Uh huh. And the guy that was driving it lost control and flipped it. Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Did anything happen to him? Is he okay? <laughs> no, they're all fine. How long ago did that happen? Gosh, man. 25 years ago. Oh, okay. That was a while. Oye, Ruben, he remembers way back then. Guys, de la boca, shut up. Man, Pio, I appreciate you coming in. And, uh, you know, I know you got to road back and you got to go to work tomorrow. So I'm not going to keep you any longer. But I man, do want to share a couple of things. I'm sorry for okay. interrupting. Go ahead, um, baby. We have a couple of our fans that had sent us some pictures of, of their collection and all of that. So this picture right here is Aurelio Perez. With with you, Pio Trevino. So um, it's I, I'm not sure exactly what year it is, but he sent us that picture. He also sent us um, it a comes collection. Up, it comes out with a little delay over yeah, here, Pio. You'll it see it on the on a a TV screen. And uh, so so he sent us his entire collection of all of your your albums, your cassettes, wow, um, awesome. autographed. Here's another one. It's it's pretty amazing. His collection is really really amazing. 
And then we also have another friend of ours who sent us a picture of his late stepmother and oop, not that wasn't it, sorry. You of his know? late stepmother and his dad, <laughs> Jack Ortiz Jr. And so he mentioned that um, you were his or, or his parents' uh, favorite artist. So thank you, Jack and Hilda up in heaven, Ortiz, um, for sending us that picture. You have so many fans, Pio. I mean, you've, uh, with the trajectory you have in the years in the industry, <laughs> you've built quite a fan base of many many people and being on the radio being on tour uh and they're all joining us tonight man and it's just incredible to see pictures once they found out you were coming to the show they started sending pictures of you with them and you know just fans there's the fans man it's yeah. just amazing to just have fans that just love you like that right yeah man i i remember one night uh I came in, we did a concert somewhere here in, in here in the valley. I'm, I don't know why I want to say Donna or somewhere there. It was an outdoor concert. Uh-huh. And uh, my wife didn't come with me that night. And I was, I was in the, I had another bus and I was inside the bus while the other bands were playing. And then, uh, uh, the people were waiting for me mm-hmm. and I, I got up there to perform and I was so amazed of how the people knew all my songs. And if, if I would have stopped singing, you could hear the people. Mm-hmm. And I was so thrilled by that, that I went home and, and I remember I, I cried to my wife of how I couldn't believe, yeah, you know, the people that were out there, because I was up there, yeah, and it's something that I never even imagined that I was going to be able to do in my life. It was, I would dream about stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, but that's about as close as I ever got to it. But then all of a sudden it started happening, and and all I can say is, you know, me orgullo bastante. Con el, el apoyo que me da el público mío tejano. Yeah. I love them all. Yeah. I mean, it's something that... And right now we have one of the best bands. Yeah. That we yeah, I, ask I for. saw that bass player of yours, man. He looks like a rocker, man. Yeah, he's from Kingsville, Danny Gonzalez. See, Danny Gonzalez? Yeah, this guy was, was young when I picked him up back in 1990. 90. Mm-hmm. And, and this, guy, this guy was a, was a rush fanatic yeah el jerry lee el de yeah Rush. yeah and 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 then uh i decided to because my mom passed away in 93 mm-hmm. and i said man i had four daughters and i finally got my boy he was two years old and i said i need to spend time with my boy so i got out of the circuit mm-hmm. completely and you know what made me get back on there selena Selena had passed away. Uh-huh. And when this happened, I said, man, you know, I was saying this and that about the industry, things that I didn't like and stuff like that. Yeah. And this guy just out of nowhere came and told me, hey, dude, we'll stop talking about it and go do something about it. Wow. You know? And I said, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Uh-huh. You know? So I got back into it, you know? And I remember <laughs> I used to have a, a bumper sticker and I I put the return of the wizard mm-hmm. on the bumper sticker yeah and then some of these promoters would go the return of the lizard <laughs> <laughs> no not the lizard no. the wizard el wizard de la o wizard, magic yeah. Pio Trevino yeah man, ladies and, and gentlemen wow man big round of applause for el wizard de la o Pio Trevino y Grupo Magic 
They are still available. They got to contact Bessie. They want to book you and stuff like that? Or? Yes. Yeah. And just okay. go to our Facebook under Pio Trevino. Okay. You'll see everything that's going on. Okay. All of our contact information. Instagram. También están en yeah. Instagram. I saw yeah. that. Snapchat. Yeah. Snap. I thought in Snapchat también. Oye, this technology. Sin ver. But we're still learning. We're yeah. a little old school. And uh, yo no sé ni fun ni fada de nada. <laughs> I, I let my wife take, take care of that. Y, y, y It's a no, lot of work. Y, huh? y que no te enseñes porque entonces vas a andar con puro bet. selfie, Pio. But, but, but you know what, man? Right now with the band that I got right now, uh -huh. I think it's the best band I've ever had, ever. They sound amazing, dude. The, 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 And the, they keyboard look good. Player, the keyboard player, Eli Molina, he's from Rio Grande. Mm -hmm. But he lives in Corpus now. And then he's also the engineer for Freddie Records. Orale. Yeah. So then I have Danny Gonzalez mm -hmm. on the bass. He's from Kingsville. And, the, and then I have uh, uh, Pepper. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy uh, Flores. Mm -hmm. He's from Corpus. He's my drummer. Mm -hmm. And then I have Pepper Gonzalez. Oh, Pepper? Yeah, I used to I play with La, La Sombra. Sombra. Yeah. Yes, sir. And he's with me, and, and I mean, these guys have been with me for the past, I guess, since 94. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, yeah. And one at one time, you were the youngest with a bunch of old band members, yeah. and now you're the oldest I, with a bunch of young band members. I'm, <laughs> I'm the old fart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it has evolved, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I love you to death, man. And I just want you to take Same care of yourself because I want you to live forever, man. You know what I mean? And you've got a wonderful wife and you've got a wonderful family, beautiful kids, grandkids. You are blessed. Bro. Before I forget, we're doing another CD. Okay. We've already finished it. I think it's going to be finished this week. Mm -hmm. We want to put it out Okay. for them to start pressing it oh, bueno. by the end of, of May. Orale. And this is going to consist of nine of my old hits. Oh, man. I redid them. You because you can't, find, wow. you can't find my music anymore. Oh, man. Because there's no more, you know, the company I used to record for. Yeah. They, they, they don't have that anymore. Uh-huh. So I'm recording nine songs of the old stuff. And then I got three original songs in there mm -hmm. that are great. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, My daughter, because they wanted me to get as close as I could to the old magic. To the old magic, they wanted me to get as cl you know as close See. as I could. So, I also had Patricia Garcia, which was Rick's ex-wife. The the Rick from Hacienda. Yeah, she's uh -huh. the one who used, used to do all my backups. Mm -hmm. She's got that angelic yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember Rick Garcia's wife. Yeah. yeah, so, I, I mean, she's not there anymore. I mean, she's there, but, you know, I don't have access to her like I used to because of Rick. Mm -hmm. But I got my daughter, Priscilla. She's my youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And she sings great. She's a chip Be off the beautiful. old block. Yeah, but she got married, had kids, and the story is different. But I said, you know, would, would you like to go do my backups? And she did, man, and it sounds great. Wow, wow man. That's awesome. That's awesome, dude. How does that feel, having your daughter be involved with your well, music? Well, I, I love it because, like, uh, Eli brought me a sample of it when we went this weekend. Uh -huh. And we started listening to it, and, and I, I looked at my wife, and I'm going, like, Priscilla's going to be in my next CD. Wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it's something that. It's incredible. Yeah. What an incredible feeling, man. So many milestones you've reached, Pio, in your career, dude. Yeah. And, and and my son, little Pio, he, he plays the guitar, plays keyboards, and he sings. And I ask him, Are you going to take my legacy? No, Dad, there's no way I can sing like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I said, Well, but you can sing good. You have mm -hmm. your own style. Yeah. And and now he's got three daughters, and the oldest one, she's nine, honey. What? She's uh, ten. Ten. She's ten. Yeah. My son taught her three chords on the guitar. Uh huh. I've never heard a kid so young play a guitar so clean, and she even made her own songs already. Wow. wow. 
It's in the DNA. And, and I'm going like, wow, I, I couldn't believe it. And she's you not know. shy. Not no, she's not. Not a bit. It's in the <laughs> DNA, man. It's in the blood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just natural ability, yeah. God-given talent, bro. And it, it, it's something that, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll hold this to my life that I, I, I am so honored to be a part of, of people that have talent and and I, I never took any kind of schooling or anything for mm. for singing or anything. It's mm. God given talent. Yeah. yeah. It was just it just came out like that. Natural ability, man. Yeah. And just being surrounded by, you know, like uh, you know, all your family members, uh, your dad's family yeah. that they all sang and it's just it's just something you absorbed like a sponge because that doesn't just because the whole family was uh, musically inclined doesn't mean every you know somebody like you is going to be able to absorb it right. and, and carry the torch and take it to the next level. I mean yeah. that, that's a whole other business deal, yeah. you know. And so uh, I mean, and then to have your kids and what you're telling me about your kids and all that, it's in the DNA, it's in the blood, and uh, and I'm sure they absorbed a lot of from you as well, man, from yeah. seeing all your great stuff i mean your memorabilia your music your videos your songs and uh it's just incredible to have you here Pio. and i really appreciate Thanks you lot, taking Rob. the drive down from kingsville and when the album comes out you're welcome you there's an open door policy in this show for you anytime you want to come by thank and you, you want to present the cd or the video whatever you want to present man my house is your house Pio. Igualmente, bro. Okay, carnalito. yes sir all right ladies and gentlemen Pio trevino Right here on Hashtag PBT, you make sure to like, subscribe, and share, okay? Don't worry, I'll, I'll save you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Popeye. <laughs> Y'all have a beautiful evening. Los dejamos con nuestro sponsor, la law office of Carlos A. Garcia. Thank you so much to him, and thank you so much to you for supporting our show, sharing our show, liking it. Everyone Giving it a thumbs hi. up. Everybody Love you. Bye. Bye. So. Everybody look at the cameras. Yeah. What I live. El amor que sentimos y al amanecer en otro día. Tú me quieres más y yo te quiero más. If you've been injured in a serious accident or you've been arrested on some serious charges, you need an attorney that's going to fight for you. Carlos A. Garcia. Obviously, if you're approached by a federal agency as it relates to an investigation, be it healthcare fraud, drug conspiracies, money laundering, bank fraud, any other federal crime, you want to remain silent. You want to talk to a lawyer who can give you real, honest advice. Give them a call right away. 956-584-1448. Because serious cases require a serious lawyer. I'm Carlos A. Garcia, a criminal defense attorney in the Rio Grande Valley. I've been practicing criminal law for over 15 years. I'm board certified in criminal law, and I can help you with every problem you may have. Board certified in criminal law. Attorney Carlos A. Garcia. 956-584-1448.